Welcome to What's Doing. The Islamic television and digital content business in Malaysia occupies a crucial space within the country's media landscape, reflecting the diverse cultural and religious fabric of the nation. With a population predominantly Muslim, there is a significant demand for content that aligns with Islamic values and teachings, ranging from religious programs to lifestyle content infused with Islamic ethos. In this vibrant industry, various channels and digital platforms compete to cater to the diverse needs and preferences of the Malaysian Muslim community. As a result, Malay, Islamic television and digital content businesses continually innovate to stay relevant, offering a wide array of programming while upholding the principles of authenticity, inclusivity and cultural sensitivity. Namazi Harris is a young and visionary leader at the helm of Al Hijra Islamic TV channel in Malaysia. With a profound dedication to serving the Islamic community and promoting Islamic values through media, Namazi has played a pivotal role in shaping the channel's direction and impact since assuming the position of CEO. Known for his strategic acumen, Unwavering commitment to authenticity and innovative approach to broadcasting, Namanzi Harris has steered Al Hijra TV towards becoming a beacon of Islamic enlightenment in the Malaysian media landscape. His leadership has not only elevated the channel's reach and influence, but has also fostered a platform that resonates with audiences seeking spiritual enrichment, cultural insights, and educational content rooted in Islamic principles. Through his leadership, Namazi continues to inspire both his team and viewers alike, driving Al Hijra to new heights and excellence and relevance in today's dynamic media environment. Welcome, Manzi, to What's Doing. Thank you so much for taking time out and coming to the show. Thank you, Abid. Um, I'm glad to be here. And, you know, really nice. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one of the first questions I want to ask, and, and I think what you are doing at Al Hijra is a fantastic job you're doing there. But uh, right now, Al Hijra is the most watched Islamic channel in Malaysia. You know, what does Al Hijra is doing? Uh, which the competitors, whichever the competitors are, are not able to do, and why Al Hijra is, is being watched so much than the other competitor uh, competitor channels. One of the things that we always um, um, focuses on is we always keep asking ourselves this question: Who we are? What are the kind of audience that we are targeting? And and being an Islamic channel, obviously, the first point that we always think about. How does a Muslim in this current situation and current time think? How do they feel? I'll give you an example. During, during MCO, it was a tough time, right? And every broadcaster wanted to broadcast the press conference of our prime minister, uh, announcing statistics and stuff. So we were doing the same thing because we were thinking that, yeah, this, the, the press conference is what people want to hear. And they will talk about um, statistics and how many people are uh, being affected by it and stuff. Uh, but then we realize one thing a bit. We realize that, hey, as TV al uh, as as a Muslim, uh, how does a Muslim react to the news? Do we want to be seen as a channel that is also uh, just purely sharing statistics without having the, the emotional part to it? So then we were asking questions and we will change our strategies. We were, we were thinking the rest of the channels are doing um, the, the press conferences. What does it do to the people? It, it brings fear because obviously people don't know about COVID at the time. There was there were, there were statistics about death. So death is behind every people's mind at the, at the time. So then we realized wow, there's no channel that, that uh, attend to those emotions. They were not empathizing. They were not empathizing. So we were thinking Let's just take the other end of the spectrum. So we were not focusing on the PC anymore. We were focusing on how do we address the emotions of people at a time after hearing all this terrible news. The mental health was getting mental affected. Health. And as Muslims, the moment we talk about death, right, we talk about how do we prepare death. 
and the best way is the book of God, you know, Al Quran. So we were focusing on Quran. We were focusing about all our shows from morning until night, all about how to motivate, how how does a Muslim react to this kind of terrible news. So we shift our strategy, and and the numbers, the shares went up. Uh, and I guess uh, those are the kind of things that we, we, we always have this question at the back of our mind. Every month, every week, what are we doing? What are the Muslims thinking right now? So those, uh, those uh, questions are very important to TV Alijra, Alijra Al Media Corporation. Uh, we always think about what does the audience at the back, while watching our shows, how are, how are they, you know, uh, as, as, as a person, um, how are they feeling at the, at the moment? You take it from an emotional perspective as well as from an Islamic value perspective from, from a viewer's uh, point of view. So I think that that's what you guys are bringing that apart from just entertaining and giving information, you also are being human. Yep. Uh, an Islamic human who, who thinks from the you know, from, from an Islamic perspective, as well as, you know, uh, entertaining your audiences. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, that's true a bit. I mean, we always think, because at the end of the day, who are we doing our shows for? Human beings. Human beings are emotions, emotional, um, emotional, emotional beings. And, and a lot of the times, me media, uh, they always think about data first. They always think about, hey, how can we get our ratings up? The That's numbers. the other channels. That's yeah, the, the other, other channels. The other channels are doing. They're thinking about ratings. That's why sometimes they they don't focus on the very thing that is very important. The human aspect. The human aspect of it. But that that's that's really good because in today's day and time, what people and what uh, everyone went through during MCO during the lockdown is that they were missing the human empathy. And that's where you guys came in and thought from that perspective. And I think the numbers are showing because of that, because you were thinking from their perspective. Because emotions is a powerful tool a bit. Yeah. You and I, we have both worked on shows that bring so much of emotions, magic, uh, emotional journey, emotional roller coasters. So those are what great films, great dramas, great content is all about. How can you harness those emotions, right? And and during uh, MCO is probably we are, we are looking at one of the most powerful emotions ever for a human being, which is how to prepare yourself. Death, right? Yeah. It's about because death, again right? it, it just became a data on a daily basis yeah, because yeah, every five yeah. o'clock or four o'clock when when the the press conference used to happen, deaths were just numbers, and yeah, people yeah. were. Yeah. Dropping dead like flies yeah, yeah. on that bill, and and at one point of time, people were just becoming so numb that oh, tomorrow it might be me also. Yeah, yeah. So I think where you guys came in, where you brought in that whole empathy factor, the human factor to not just making television for the rating, but for also preparing people if tomorrow something terrible happens, they are prepared. Yeah. So yeah. I think uh, that definitely put you guys uh, apart from the other competitors which you had. Yeah, yeah. So I think going forward, that is what your strategy is with your with, with the Al Hijra? Uh, yes, um, because we, we now, I mean, I, if I, I can share as well, uh, quite a, a cr proud moment for us. Um, we have just recently been uh, acknowledged as the top five channels in Malaysia. Wow. And for an Islamic channel, um, and you know how difficult it is, right? With all the frameworks, uh, with the limitations of the audience profile as well, uh, for us to be recognized as top five channels in Malaysia, going against the general entertainment channels uh, with a lot of signature shows. You're talking um, about the, the, a lot of money to blow. A lot, yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? I mean, um, I mean it, it, it tells a lot about, number one, the appetite of audience, and number two, um, uh, we were running a campaign for Palestine. So uh, they call it hashtag Palestine Kembali, means uh, the people of Palestine is trying to go back to their homeland and taking, taking charge of it. Um, and we were supporting a lot of the news coming from there and we were talking about these issues and, and, uh, and not a lot of other medias uh, um, um, focusing, focusing on that. Uh, and that's where um, the Islamic news, uh, the Islamic um, um, issues 
people look at TV Al Hijrah as the home for um, issues regarding the Muslims community. Uh, so we become uh, the first uh, the first place that they look out for. Uh, even locally, with, with regard to some of the issues that happens recently uh, on our, our Sharia courts and stuff. So, and we launched the campaign, and the campaign uh, focuses on a lot of stories, people's stories, um, and, uh, and it has really helped us. I'm not saying that we are using, uh, but uh, we, we were surprised by um, the kind of channel shares and the kind of... The kind of um, uh, connections that we get with our audience. So, Alhamdulillah, that has been our journey, and we really focuses on uh, the emotional aspect of 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 uh, of our audience, uh, and we want to run away. Uh, we the data is important a bit. Yeah. Uh, we subscribe to AC Nielsen and Kanta. Um, uh, used to be Kanta, but now it's just AC Nielsen. The data is important, but we use the data to assist us on uh, other stuff on how to target certain audience, on how we can bring our da'wah to other uh, non-Muslim community. But we really focus on the emotional aspect and it becomes uh, how can we design our shows to drive a campaign, which is an act actionable campaign, um, like for during, uh, during PKP MCO of your time. Uh, we were the first channel, I mean like we had a chat just now, you started uh, what's doing with just one episode. Yeah. Now it's going to be your 13th episode, your 12th <laughs> yeah. episode. Yeah. So we initially, we wanted to start My Quran Time with just one episode because it was the first time that we, had, we uh, the country is undergoing quarantine time. So just one episode. Suddenly the one episode uh, gets so much of uh, attention and there's so much requests. We end up doing 800, more than 800 episodes wow. every day for one hour. A page of the Quran every day, Tadabur, we learn uh, the Tajweed, we, we learn and we read about the, the translation and the meaning behind the Quran. So, and we are now in our second season. Wow. In fact, we double up on our shows. We have My Quran Time, with the, which is the collaboration with Yasin Oris and Umar Ikhlas, and another one called Quran at 114. Uh, and in, we are du doubling up our effort on the Quran translations and, and, and shows. Well, you, those are the blessings you're getting in return for all the Quran <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <stuff. laughs> so, tell me one thing. Ever since you have taken the reins of Al-Hijra, what has been your journey and what is your plan for its future? Right. It's, it's, it's tough a bit. I mean, coming from a very commercial-driven uh, media uh, entity. Astro. Astro. <laughs> Astro has been a great place, great learning place for a lot of us, especially yeah. for me. It's very dear to, to my heart as well. Um, from entertainment-based shows, um, going into an Islamic uh, space, um, from a purely uh, corporate and a very uh, um, commercial-driven uh, media to a government-linked company, it has not been an easy journey. Uh, the first uh, aspect is the, the style of work, you know. Uh, over there, it's always numbers, 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 you know, sales, 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 rating, rating, ratings, uh, Zaine, uh, Rosie, you know. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's it, and going into a, an, um, uh, an entity that really focuses on the message to the people. So, the first, um, the first challenge would be to get the trust of the people in TV Alija. Um, that took me a couple of months to establish because obviously um, uh, if, if I, I believe that if you take if you control the ship and the people you can ride any kind any kind of storms doesn't matter how strong you know, the, winds the, the winds are so uh, that and is also the the, you were considered as an outsider yeah I yeah. mean as an outsider it's yeah. very difficult to get a trust in Second is the, I mean, during that time, 2018 and 2019, I mean, if you remember, those, the, the OTTs are fairly new in Malaysia. They were about to put a stronghold or about to launch uh, uh, in Malaysia. And we were still on the phase where reality shows are in, the dramas are really huge and, and big. And there was this transition uh, in, from political point of view, a political stand. So it's, it's a transition uh, period for even the industry. 
um, and, and going from a very traditional conventional media. So the tough, the very challenging part is to how can TV Al Jazeera shift um, into and converge itself with the new platform, you know, the digital, the OTTs, and the, the social media and, and digital. And, and there has been quite a, a transformation um, and that's, that's tough because we have to uh, reassess ourselves, we have to look at all our assets and how can we relaunch ourselves in the digital space and for conventional media, for, for any uh, um, um, uh, TV stations to suddenly go into the OTT space. It's, it's, it's been, a, and it still is, a struggling uh, endeavor for, for the most of us. So that is the second part that is really tough. And obviously during 2020, when, when we were hit with COVID, so we were about to, um, to steady the ship, then suddenly this, this, this uh, tragedy happens and, and before a lot of us. And those are the kind of things that it's really uh, challenging for us. But Alhamdulillah, sometimes a bit um, forecasting is one thing, but uh, actually, uh, walking that path is a totally different thing. Yep. So we can forecast so many things, you know, like, I mean, Doctor Strange, you know, I mean, uh, quite a... So there, there's millions of possibilities, but there's only one path. Yep. It's only when you walk that path that, that you can, you, you know what is really happening. And, and, and one of the things that, that I'm, I'm grateful is that I uh, inherited uh, quite an adaptable uh, team so they accepted me after. No, you the, have a great team, I should say. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, uh, they, they, they adapt quite fast, and I think one of the skills that is really important for us, especially our generation, is how fast can we adapt to the changes? How fast can we adapt to to the the scenarios currently that we we can't really forecast too much? You know, we can forecast. I mean, prepare ourselves, but the most important part is how can you change? How can you adapt? And how can you uh, con reconfigure uh, and, and address uh, those challenges so that you can, number one, survive, and then number two, uh, grow? So those are the, the big challenges that, that, that Alijra face. But Alhamdulillah, sometimes with the grace of God as well, a bit, um, we were forecasting that TV Hijra is going to be, uh, we're going to be uh, in, in a much more challenging uh, financial situation during PKP, during MCO, because of the changes that we made, uh, because of the focus that we shift from one spectrum to the other spectrum, focusing on not information but emotion, how to address those things, um, end up during the next financial year, we were cash flow positive. Mashallah. We were able to pay zakat for the first time ever. So, and, and we were able to contribute back to uh, the government and to, to manage to do our tax. Uh, so, that's I mean, that, a fantastic news. Yeah, that's man. Really I nice. mean, within, within one, one and a half years, um, uh, with, with, I mean, I'm sure these are all uh, uh, Allah's will, you know, with whatever that is happening, we see uh, the growth for TV Alijra during the times of tragedy. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's, Although uh, initially we thought that we're going to go under, okay, we, it's, it's going to be challenging times for us. Uh, it's the other way around, okay. the other way around. I think you got a lot of blessing from the people who are watching your show during tough time and yeah, the, the, the whole the emotion. The people, yeah. right? I think the the the, the positivity you you try to spread uh, during the times of need. I think that's coming back to you. So I think uh, it's heaven sent. I would say. <laughs> <Alhamdulillah>. <laughs> so how does Al Hijra differentiate uh, itself from the other media outlets in Malaysia? Number one, it's very focused on Islamic um, content. Uh, we focuses on a lot of um, uh, halal shows as well. Um, we focus on knowledge base. Um, those are the key things that we really focuses on. Um, because Islam, like you know, I mean, you've traveled a lot a bit. It's the most misunderstood religion. Um, and, and what comes with that, uh, we see opportunity. When we do uh, programs that provides a knowledge, uh, and provide information 
because our audience in Malaysia are, uh, uh, I mean, we have multi 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 race people watching our shows, so we really focus on that, and and that has really helped us um, uh, put ourselves uh, unique in a unique position, uh, and and uh, it, it's almost like an education channel, uh, but we with a twist and with a with a, with a taste of entertainment, because obviously you cannot run away from popular culture's genre. Uh, and coming from Astro, uh, that has been our focus and have been blessed with, with learning the ropes of doing uh, huge, uh, big and entertainment shows. So uh, we've infused some of that elements in our uh, Islamic uh, knowledge-based content. Uh, the other thing that we are really uh, active on is the uh, uh, CSR shows, because it's important, although a lot of people say, no, no, you don't have to go out any, uh, this age and time. You just need to post it on social media. You need to post it on digital, and 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 the brand will 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 have that uh, that uh, um, length in 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 people knowing your brand. But it's important you for you for us to have a connection with the people. Uh, it's really still very important, especially in Malaysia, for us to go down and talk to the people and doing actual shows, feeling the actual emotions happening, because you can mask your emotion in digital, you know, you can mask your emotion in, in online. That's why uh, online meetings are not so popular and yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they want to come and have face-to-face -face interaction, because <laughs> that, that's people, you know, a bit, I mean, people, you need people to, 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 to survive, you know. So that is the other aspect that we're really active on and, and focuses on. Um, knowledge um, on ground activation, uh, as well as uh, uh, that what con we call it that what contemporary, the contemporary um, shows that talks about uh, Islam uh, and having some entertainment element to it. So, going back to what you're talking about, the programming part of it, you know, how does Al Hijra? play this significant role in, in, in Malaysian uh, media of, uh, you know, spreading Islamic values and cultural, uh, cultural values uh, for its audience. How, how does that, uh, mean? how do you push that? Um, because we are also reporting to the ministers in the religious affairs. So Jakim. we have Jak Jakim and also the, the minister, uh, Minister of Religious Affairs. Uh, Dr. Naim, Dr. Naim, um, we have access to the um, insights of uh, the religious management in Malaysia. Um, what separates us is we we are quite a hybrid entity. While we are focusing on getting more audience to watch us, um, similar like any other commercial channels, uh, we have the responsibility to be the the earpiece and the 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 uh, medium for the government to share its agenda uh, focuses also on the, the Islamic uh, management in Malaysia, Jakim, the Muftis, the different estates. So um, that has also positioned us in, a, in, a, in a, uh, a, a platform where we become the eyes and the ears of the government uh, and the mouthpiece of the government. Uh, and we can share what are the issues that we need to, to share with, with the people um, and telling them uh, and, and giving them clarity on some of the issues that is happening. Uh, I think the audience, are, uh, the, the, the Malaysians are very uh, interested to, to know about the issues surrounding the, the Sharia court, uh, the issues regarding uh, Muslims, um, um, uh, Muslims uh, issues, uh, marriage, uh, uh, those are the, 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 those are the kind of uh, unique propositions that we have while we are trying uh, to compete with the other commercial channels we are also one part of the government channel uh, in spreading the message of Islam the message of of, uh, of uh, Malaysia Madani as well as uh, Gagasan Al Fala um, so those are the kind of things that separates us as well just, just for my knowledge and the viewers and audiences knowledge, is Al Hijra a completely government-owned entity? Al Hijra is a company by limited guarantee, so we report to uh, the ministers in the religious affairs. Um, the government give us a minimum grant, 
um, but um, for the majority of the operational um, um, aspects of it, we have to find our own uh, income. So in order for us to produce shows, in order for us to grow, in order for us to invest in, in OTT and applications and digital, in order for us to, to create more uh, brand activations uh, initiatives, we have to find our own revenue. So we have to compete a bit. We have to compete with the likes of Media Prima, Astro. That's why rating comes into 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 it. We have to go out and and market ourselves. We have to talk to the media buyers. So uh, for us to grow as a company, uh, as an NGLC, we have to compete with the other TV stations. Um, at the same time, we have a responsibility to provide uh, the people with the government messages as well. So it's it's tough. Uh, it's tough. Uh, it puts us in a unique situation as well. Uh, I've, I've been using quite a lot of unique uh, because that that has really that is really uh, it tells TV Hijra's story that we are a unique entity um, that we have to think differently. Um, we have the challenges comes to us at all kind of directions. Um, we have to manage the complexity of. The, the Islamic uh, uh, framework in Malaysia as well, uh, but we have to compete. That's where that's that's where um, that has really uh, uh, toughened us up. Uh, it, it toughened our staff up as well, our the team members. Basically, we are saying that it's not easy just because it's government entity is there yeah, in, in, in Al Hijra. It's, it's not easy. You will have to fend for your own self when it comes to cents and dollars. Correct, correct. I mean, they just provide us with with uh, some grant, but the rest we have to survive on. Our Basically, they give you breakfast. You need to take we care to of lunch, lunch and, and dinner. And dinner. <laughs> So tell me, what are the key milestones of Al Hijra, uh, which is they have uh, means Al Hijra has achieved uh, under your you know uh, tutelage? Number one is the financial stability of the company. There were some concerns a uh, couple of years back, so we were able to stabilize on that front. Uh, we were able to get more sponsors coming in. We were able to convince even the the big corporations to come in and spend with us and invest with us. And number two, uh, the digital transformation of, of TV Al Hijra. Uh, some of the things that we realize, news travels faster and being consumed more on the digital space. Yes. Although we still need to do the long form uh, of news content, but we need to travel fast in the digital space for news. Um, we realize that um, uh, um, while we are, we are producing uh, a lot of I mean, there are a couple of learnings for us as well. We were focusing on what works by looking at the data. So we were trying to compete with the commercial channels by having more entertainment shows. It doesn't work for TV Al Hijra, unfortunately. So we've, we've, it's, it's a, my, our previous boss would say it's a sharp learning curve. It's not just a learning curve, it's a sharp learning curve. Zainé said that, you know. So, <laughs> Um, uh, and what we realize is, for TV Al Hijra, people want the spiritual content of it being done in a nice, um, um, a very modern, stylistic look. Um, and and uh, we realize the, the learning programs gets more traction than the entertainment programs. Um, and. Um, Alhamdulillah, um, we were uh, given almost 20 awards um, uh, for the past few years. Uh, Alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. so we, we were recognized locally and internationally in one of our in one of the local award shows, Anugrasri Angkasa. We managed to back three awards. Lovely. Uh, one of the awards is uh, for the best reality show. It's not the best religious show. The best reality show, we were able to uh, beat some of the uh, reality shows maker uh, TV stations. Uh, even that's so, a that's huge a, news. <laughs> People are spending millions on yeah, that so, one. I mean, it it, it surprised caught, we were caught by surprise, and it surprised a lot of people as well. That for a small uh, TV stations like us, we were able to produce uh, reality shows and and be the best. The very good topic you picked up, 
because al hijra now is known pretty much every in, in every household in in malaysia and obviously globally people know in malaysia there is an islamic channel called al hijra so how are you fostering your relationship with international islamic bodies which is very important in today's day and age where there's so much of you know uh, islamic content being turned around and also your relationship uh, with the religious authorities maybe in the middle east or in saudi uh, how do you do that how how do you foster that relationship i mean we normally we have a lot of visits to the embassy uh, especially during the time of hajj uh, we just had a yearly visit and ongoing uh, discussions and program with the embassy of saudi arabia uh, and we do have also we simulcast the their live uh, makka uh, recordings as well live uh, at the same time um, there are couple of um, programs that uh, we are working with uh, palestine tv especially highlighting on the palestinian issues um, and we are also um, working towards exp- expanding our network with a lot of uh, the islamic countries as well uh, for this coming ramadan we had just bought over the rights to show uh, risalah al imam which is a story of imam ashafi that is um, we have just started slowly because we, we we are now at a at a situation where we are able to explore the ex- international market um we it is slowly we are trying to get our our name and our brands outside out there uh, but we are assisting uh, locally uh, here with a lot of the embassies to promote uh some of the islamic um, uh, tourist destinations um hopefully we can be like uh, creative stew one day producing inshallah. for inshallah <laughs> for netflix amazon you know uh and 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 putting out putting out a lot more uh, muslim modern progressive content so that people international people knows that this is what malaysia is all about Uh, that has been our ambition inshallah no that that's that's a great vision actually the thing is everybody knows malaysia as a modern muslim country right but they don't know much about it they just know about <laughs> it they don't know much about it i think from that uh, you know uh, relationship which you have with an international muslim countries i think that's where you can put your content as well as you know ask them to come and visit us and then see how the country is and how how we live and how we follow islam in 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 malaysia yeah, so yeah. i think this is a great initiative which yeah, you have you yeah. have put in i what does al hijra uh, at this point of time is uh, doing to you know contribute to the social economic development and you know uh, cohesion of malaysian so- malaysian society because you are an integral part of every muslim household in malaysia yeah. so what are you, means what at what level are you contributing apart from the tv shows is there anything else which you which an al hijra is contributing uh, apart from showing tv yeah we we are now focusing on um the adab and the ikhtilaf in differences of opinion in malaysia um uh, the the issue currently that we have um uh, the the politics among uh, the the different religious uh, personnel uh, i think this has this i mean this has been going on for quite a quite for quite a while um the government of malaysia wanted us to focus us on programs uh, promoting uh, adab promoting ways to to uh, handle differences of opinion um and and a lot of malaysians uh, and muslim in malaysia um some of them even majority of us um they they seek to find uh, the authoritative figure and tv alijra is being seen as a platform to provide a very neutral understanding a very a safe place for people to know more about islam because a lot of muslims now because of post pkp and mco um they took a lot of interest in um becoming more i would say religious or better muslims um because um, the impact of my quran time is huge 
um, understanding the the Quran, understanding, uh, reading the Quran with understanding, uh, and because of that, it it comes with um, the more you know, the more um, the more. I mean, there's there's a saying: the more you know, the more you don't know. Yeah. Especially uh, when it comes to um, the differences, uh, the sect of Islam, right? So TV Ijrash focusing on programs um, that that. Um, would uh, provide uh, a place where uh, differences of opinion uh, is being seen as hikmah uh, uh, and uh, we are helping the government to ensure that um, the issue of extremism um, it, 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 to, to address that because there's there's a danger in that I mean, um, while while we, um, uh, Alhamdulillah, the growth of knowledge amongst uh, the people of Malaysia, the Muslims majority as well, especially, um, it it um, uh, it comes with also certain issues that uh, that the government of Malaysia wants us to focus on, and we put a lot of effort in programs adapt iktilaf, uh, differences of opinion, uh, how to handle that. Uh, the more, like um, there's a saying, the more you know, the more you don't know, and the more you seek uh, knowledge, uh, that's where we uh, provide a lot of programs and campaigns to ensure that Malaysians have got the right uh, place to refer some of the questions uh, when dealing with khilaf in religion. So, uh, so those are the kind of effort that, that uh, is really, really important to us. And, and we push a lot more programs, uh, especially on the Quran and the Hadith, um, because it's important for Muslims to understand um, the Quran, understand Hadith, so they can make a they can make good judgment uh, over information coming in. Um, uh, recently, there's there's a lot of issue with regards to uh, uh, Sharia court. Um, the issue of uh, the descendants of Rasulullah Sallallahu So we played a major part uh, in 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 providing information, vital information, for the Muslims uh, in Malaysia, uh, as well as the non-Muslims, uh, so that they have a safe place to get more information. So we 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 are really focusing on that as well. I mean, we spoke about the cover girl, right? I mean, now the, the focus is on you. I want to ask you, right? I mean, imagine having the cover girl, the programs that you produce for Amazon in Malaysia. I know there, there, there are a couple of difficulties that you face because that's a, that's a Malaysian product, but Amazon took it. I guess the media in Malaysia, when if you propose to them, I mean, they have this, um, you know, uh, the first reaction will be, ooh, can we actually Six do years it, of right? ooh happened. To oh. us. <laughs> <laughs> so even if you propose it to TV Alijra, I guess the first reaction would be that, right? But in order for us to prepare the people, the authorities, the religious figures, in order for us to prepare for the actual world, what is happening outside, that part in that journey of understanding more about Islam as a Muslim must happen. Understanding the history of Islam must happen. Then they will be in a better position to open themselves up for critical, modern content that, that we require in order for us to become uh, modern Muslims, in order for us to tell the non-Muslim about the beauty of Islam. So that was our whole idea was means if you've seen the show. So how we wrote the show was not only for Malaysia. Hmm. That show was written in Malaysia for the world. So while we were talking about the business of his job, which the main lead character is is into, we are also telling the audience what is hijab all about. Right. When she can wear the hijab and in front of whom she cannot wear the hijab. Right. So uh, slowly we were teaching also the audience that see what you see in the Western media is not exactly what hijab is all about. Yeah, it's not forced upon thing. So I think the beauty of telling a story, a Malaysian local story to the world, is that it's a responsibility also for us to teach the 
audiences in 240 countries, which the show is streaming right now. Right. Of where this whole hijab story comes from. Right. What is the idea behind it? Why do women wear hijab in the first place? Right. And what is what goes behind it? Right. So I think it's not only about modern Muslim Malaysian women. It's about more how modern understanding our religion is if you have the proper knowledge to impart. Yeah. And I think that's the responsibility of the storytellers as well as the broadcasters to how to upgrade our audiences to what the world is, you know, going at this point of time. Yeah. So uh, I think I agree with what you're saying is that, yes, if tomorrow that cover girl comes on Al Hijra, you will have to make sure that your audience is are, are ready. The, are ready, yeah. Already, the, the stakeholders, the ecosystems are ready. Uh, because the danger is there now. There's a danger that the more people understand or wanting to understand Islam, who do they refer to? Which path they, they take, right? So TV Jira needs to be able to be the platform for the people to come, safe place for them to understand the current scenario, at the same time having the right information about Islam, so we become better Muslim, a bit. We become better Muslim. We become better exporter of Islamic values exactly. uh, in, 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 in a modern world. So we cannot go backwards. You know, we have to move forward. Understanding history is important. Uh, understanding Quran and Hadith is important. And how do we uh, put all of that together and, and export Islamic values through our shows? So having said that, means you're talking about innovation, you're talking about putting stuff on social media. Mm. And then, you know, social media is uh, is the gutter of everybody's free opinion. So, and knowing Islamic content, knowing how easily audiences get triggered, like yeah. there is a lot of fight happening in the comment section. How do you you know, uh, filter that also, how do you, and what do you learn from it so that you are aware of what kind of audiences you're getting for your show? That's, 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 a, that's a good question. Uh, people in social media, the first thought at the back of their mind, how can I make this post viral? How can I assist my brand? So a lot of people are, watch, are reading it, watching the content, so they come to uh, uh, TV al -Hijra. I wouldn't say it's a perfect uh, journey. I mean, there's a lot of learning as well. Uh, the team will always push the envelope. They will always put up questions, um, um, critical questions, controversial questions. Um, we learn through the responses given by uh, our audiences, um, the speed in which we react to it, um, we have to keep on um, uh, asking uh, the issues that is happening currently. I think, for example, um, Nick Allen issues because it's out there, the court, uh, Sharia court. We have to put the information. I mean, for a GLC, for a, 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 con a station like us, what's the point of putting up a content that is viral but put a lot of risks to us, right? We can decide, no, no, let's be a safe place. We don't highlight issues. But those are the kind of things that the audience want to know. So we have to keep on pushing the, the envelope. Uh, we have to keep on asking our social media um, executives and, and people to, to have the right balance of what, what kind of controversial question that gets people to come and read our content. But at the same time, having the maturity to manage the outbursts and, and the people that has been triggered by it. You cannot run away from controversial, a bit controversy, you cannot run away from it. You have to prepare yourselves. And the best way to prepare is having your team uh, with, with enough knowledge about um, Islam and about um, uh, Quran and about Hadith and how you uh, prepare yourselves with the backlash. Um, so that has been an important part, not just uh, content and knowledge as a content for TV al -Hijra, but knowledge for the people in TV al -Hijra, preparing themselves for, 
for um, uh, having to decide on on those issues that is most of the time quite sensitive see there are many school of thoughts in islam and i think that's where people have opinions then you have a religious body called yakim then you have your producers who are making the show how does everybody synergizes to make a show or make a content which goes on al hijra which is kosher halal and you know uh, is not going to be controversial as such what what you know uh, checks and balances you put in place yeah. so that uh, that doesn't happen <laughs> that's that's quite a balancing act when you see our theme satukan ummah dengan ilmu getting the ummah together with knowledge i believe only with knowledge the knowledge of the history of islam the knowledge the history of the ummah uh, from the time of rasulullah uh, to the sahaba only with knowledge that you can take all these differences of opinion and get them together and working uh, together a lot of the problems comes with taklid buta means that you have blind faith you just put blind faith because we we spoke about we discussed about it um, muslims majority of muslims they like express lane to heaven right <laughs> so they like their sins to be uh, absolved and they, they like to go on an express lane to heaven and the best way is to follow a person or to follow a, a, a school Ustaz. of those stars right <clears throat> but it doesn't work that way because knowledge needs to be gain you need to work on knowledge you need to work on your iman you need to work on the understanding of islam so that's why there's a lot of focus on content based uh, uh, program uh, the the recitation of the quran the the tadabbur of the quran the hadith so you understand the politics of that happens in the past it's 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 it, it's a it's a it's it is still a a challenge Uh, and it's a challenge that that for me i think um uh, it's important for us to to really put ourselves and test ourselves as well um because in malaysia uh, we are sunni uh, and um in in a sect of sunni there we are ashaira maturidi but there's all other um, opinions and there's all not just jakim and not just uh, the religious authorities but the states as well so they they have it's quite complex um but that's where we excel a bit the fact that we know the stakeholders the fact that we know the processes the fact that we know the framework of malaysian um, authoritative islamic figures and and the framework behind it it puts us way ahead than any other channels um that is trying to create an islamic content you can see um we are the only islamic tv station left that produces reality islamic shows the other station has become lifestyle channels and lifestyle islamic channels. lifestyle channels. Channels. <laughs> if you see uh the 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 trend in all other platforms that has an islamic uh, con- uh, channel they have stopped producing all these big shows for muslim community because they have been criticized before they are afraid to do it afraid of offending certain people and certain religious authorities because of the lack of understanding of the whole entire ecosystem knowledge and knowledge the moment you have knowledge you can you can justify you can you can tell your stories you can you can create so many programs there's so many issues with the guts the show me is controversial issues in 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 uh, projecting a, a islamic content the moment you talk about polygamy it's taboo right uh, it's instances like that uh, so a lot of the other uh, media they have stopped producing islamic contemporary content because they are afraid to be criticized by the authorities we on the other hand we took up the challenge we want to be the channel that produces contemporary programs contemporary issues uh, but in in a safe environment 
and we have received quite a lot of flags. I mean, if you look at for the past two years, TV Ijra is probably in in the controversial space uh, on on some of the decisions that we take we took, but because of knowledge, we are able to um, um, uh, get past through those challenges, and and at the end of the day, uh, end up we have good rapport with a lot of the religious authorities as well, because they understand what we are trying to do. They understand that differences of opinion doesn't need, need to be uh, a bad thing. Uh, so, uh, so those are the kind of things that puts us uh, um, uh, different than the other media stations, media Islam channels. So tell me now that you are in a, in a way, uh, you know, you've got the house in order, the Alijra house in order, you're, inshallah, you're going to be out from the red and to the black. Inshallah. So what are the strategic priorities of Al-Hijra now going forward? Means how 2024 onwards, how Al-Hijra's uh, you know, priorities will be and what are those priorities so that the growth doesn't slow down? Yeah, I think the, the focus will be synergies a bit. We don't have time to learn ourselves. We don't have time to experiment. We don't have the budget, we don't have the time. So we require synergies, partnership with a lot of um, uh, players, um, be it, be it uh, uh, digital monetization um, space, uh, content creation space. We require friends. We require friends. We, we, we as, as a brand, we are, we, 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 are, we are strong in Malaysia. We want to export ourselves to the outside world. If you see a lot of the uh, other Islamic media TV station, we are probably one of the biggest producer of Islamic entertainment shows, but nobody knows about it internationally. We want to be known there in that space. We want to be known as, as a, a platform that provides contemporary, modern, progressive, uh, Muslim content, uh, Sharia compliant, Content producers, um, and we want to be. We want to. We want to explore that. Era. Now that the house is in order in, in locally, uh, we have st uh, stability in the financial space as well. Uh, uh, our financials are quite stable. Um, we want to synergy with a lot more uh, players out, out there, um, international uh, distribution, um, digital space. Um, because I, I told the team and I told the board as well, we don't have time to learn our own. We have to synergize. And that has been our key uh, focus in 2024, 2025, 2027, um, especially in the area of uh, digital monetization. Uh, we want to we wanna find partners that can assist us in, in re-planning um, uh, re, uh, uh, and, and um, strategizing in, in, on, on that. That brings us to the end of the show. Thank you, Manzi, for, for your time. And I think that is a lot of learning, especially for me also, uh, which you just imparted. And uh, I think uh, uh, Alijra is on the right track to the future. And uh, I wish all the best to Alijra under your leadership to grow and uh, be the number one channel it is right now for the next 10, 20 years. Inshallah. <laughs> in the future. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Abid. Thank you for having me today. As per Statista in 2021, Muslims around the world spent a total of two trillion US dollars across food, pharmaceutical, cosmetics, fashion, travel, and media sectors. The global Muslim market has the potential to grow to about 2.8 trillion dollars by 2025. And Al-Hijra is also a small part of this phenomenal global growth. Stew on this till the next episode of What's Stewing. Mm -hmm.